Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Sagittarius for May 2014. So if Sag is your sun sign, or Sag is your rising sign, then this is for you. Check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, or click on the link below this video, and you can see there more about my astrology and coaching, life coaching sessions. And you can also sign up for my free email newsletter, where you will receive additional monthly information for the upcoming month about the astrology for the month, and additional inspiration, motivation, and interesting things delivered into your inbox for me. So check it out. So what's up for May of 2014 for Sag? Well, lots of things. By now, most of the news of the eclipses will have made themselves known, although that solar eclipse just happened at the end of April. Um, so right into the early part of May, there might be some pretty big eclipse effects still occurring. And the solar eclipse bringing in new things, the lunar eclipse eclipsing out old things or other things. And so that activity is still very, very, very much present. If you want to hear more about that, then go back to the April horoscope and where I went and discussed at length about the eclipses. But those effects are going to still be very, very much um, telling a story, moving along a continuum into May and beyond. And there are other things. Um, Mars is still going retrograde as of the beginning of May, and as for most of May. Mars started to go retrograde in the beginning of March and will go direct officially May 19th or 20th, depending on where you are. So Mars rules your energy that wants to move forward with things. So by now, many people have been going stir-crazy because everything that they're trying to do, if you've been listening to me and not trying to do too much, then you probably had more of a peaceful time. <laughs> and if you haven't, and you've been just trying to make things work and things are not quite coming together, then by the time it goes direct, you're like really wanting things to happen. And in some ways, there's going to be a lot of action and a lot of activity, and definitely this stored energy that's been happening during the Mars retrograde cycle is going to push forward in a very big way. However, as it does... Mercury is going retrograde, and so there's this pushing forward, and then there's still, but the details aren't situated. Blazing forward, but still we don't know exactly where to or what it's going to look like. So just try to be patient as the rest of the details come into play. You've got the eclipse is still delivering news. You've got Mars and Mercury doing this whole thing. So between now and the middle of July, there are a lot of pieces that you're just not going to know about. So if you just accept that right now and know already that you're not going to know the whole story of something that seems like it's very well defined right now, things are going to continue to shift. And the more fluid you can be, the more peace you're going to have. We can't control what happens. We can only control our quality of experience. And part of how we can improve our quality of experience is by learning and using things like astrology. Because if you understand that it's just not time for all the details to come together yet, Rather than trying to force them, you can put yourself in a position to be flexible and to move as the changes move and the pieces of information come in. Okay, so the middle of July is when all of this whole 10-month sequence of personal planets being retrograde are actually clear. So try to hold on until then and then blaze forward between the middle of July and the middle of September with all your things that you want to do new and launch and make decisions and do stuff. But until then, just kind of observe and respond to the things that happen. Make decisions based on the fact that you have to respond rather than trying to initiate too much. Something else I want to talk about is Pisces. Pisces um, moves through a sign. It takes about 14 years. So it's a really, really, really long-term transit. And Pisces is moving through the Sag's solar fourth house, which rules home and family. Neptune rules the sea. So for many, many, many Sag's, the sea is going to become more prominent in their experience, or water of any kind is going to become more prominent. So if you live in the desert, some of you might wind up moving back to the beach, which is what I'm doing. I've been living in the desert for a very long time, and before then I lived at the beach for a very long time, and I sensed that Neptune was going to bring the sea back into my life, and indeed it has. So you could actually be moving to water during this time. Or this, the water can come more to you, and that can look in a lot of ways. So let's say you actually live on the water already. 
the odds of Sag having water damage to things that they own or have during the time that Neptune is in Pisces is increased. So be thinking about this for the next very many years that you are a little bit more susceptible to things involving water for better and for worse. If you're a renter and you don't have renter's insurance, even if you live in a place like the desert that doesn't have a lot of water or rain problems, consider having renter's insurance. Um, I had an incident that, that was similar to this. There's very rarely rain here. And in that rain, there's very rarely rain like where it would be in my house. <laughs> but knowing that this Neptune thing is going on, there's a place where some water could come out. So we don't put anything by there. And if we did, during the last storm we had, it would have been destroyed from water. So taking these extra precautions, if you know beforehand, can prevent a whole bunch of problems. Now, if there wasn't that much water coming from there, and I put a whole bunch of papers or mementos, then perhaps those things would be ruined. But if you know beforehand that you're more susceptible to that, then you can take extra precautions, and that's why I want to talk to you about this. So the same thing with flood or wind insurance. If you have flood or wind insurance because you need to, try to keep your deductible low and, if, and get more coverage because the odds are that you will need more coverage during this time. Um, they're increased. Now, it doesn't mean that for every stage is going to happen. It's not any reason to worry. It's just something to take into consideration because you just are more sticky for having the water make itself known, um, whatever form of water that would take. So some other things that I want to talk about. Actually, let's talk about Saturn. Saturn is going to be moving, technically, it's going to be in a full transit through Sagittarius from September 2015 through December 2017. So you might be asking, why are you talking about this now? This is May of 2014. Because I'm your friend and I want to help you and I want to help you understand Saturn and that things don't just happen on the exact date that it looks like they're going to. And the more we can understand that, the more you can really, really work with this very powerful energy. So Saturn doesn't officially leave Scorpio for good until September 2015. But it does go into Sag starting Christmas Eve of this year, 2014. And then it spends some time in Sagittarius, and then it retrogrades back into Scorpio, where then in September it leaves Scorpio for good. So the story of Saturn and Sagittarius is much closer than, if you're looking to see the official dates, it's much closer than, than you think. And it's time to prepare for that now. So now we're talking about December. Okay, So May to December, that's only seven months. So again, you might say, why seven months beforehand are we supposed to be thinking about this? Saturn takes 28 to 30 years to move around the full circle. Seven months is like a drop in the bucket. It doesn't mean now that Saturn has no influence on the energies of Sag at all until December 24th exactly. It's not like that. There are orbs of energy that flow into each other. Saturn's influence moving into our sign, whether it's your rising sign or your moon sign or your sun sign, it doesn't matter, that influence is starting now. And some of the ways that might be coming up is a call to do things that you have been putting off forever. You know I love Sages. Sag is one of my just favorite expressions, only because I really understand it very well. I have nine placements in Sag, so I really, really get the Sag energy. But we do know that we can get a little noncommittal, and we do know that it can be really easy to dwell in the arena of big dreams, and sometimes a little bit more challenging to pull together the details and have the consistency and commit to the dedication of the plan to pull some of these big things in. Now, if you have a lot of stuff cuspy to Capricorn or a lot of other planets in Capricorn, then this will be easier, or other Earth signs, this will be easier for you with your Sag placement. You know, I don't know what percentage or what your ratios are looking like, but you know the places where you can be more consistent. And there, there are certain particular things in your life that you want. And those certain particular things are going to take some hard work and dedication and commitment and consistency. And that's exactly what Saturn offers. So you can use Saturn's energy proactively to get yourself in gear for between now and December 2017. So this is a several-year process 
where you can bring to fruition all the things that you've ever wanted. Some people dread Saturn moving through their sign. And I want to help you not dread that. I want to help you be excited that the other side of Saturn, okay, let's talk about the side of Saturn that people are afraid of. It's associated um, with heaviness, burdens, um, difficulties, trauma, drama, karma, and did I say heaviness? <laughs> heaviness, burden, burden, heaviness. So you can see why people come to not want that, especially Sages who are so light and free and happy and flowing and optimistic and positive. So the way that we can stay in that way that we are more, I believe, during a Saturn transit is by proactively taking charge of things, making lists, making an organized um, plan for the things that you want. Now, if it's something having to do with your business, then put together a plan for the next three years of what you're trying to do now, what steps it will take to get there, and if you need help, then just ask someone who's naturally better at that help you, or if you're good at that, you're just not doing it, then just do it. So the more you define this, the more you can use that energy to really, really, really create the things you want. If it's in relationship or, or if it's with your health, you know, take the time now to be thinking about what is it that you really should be doing? Chances are you pretty much know what you should be doing. You're just not doing it. And now is the time to be thinking about that. And gosh, we'll be talking more about Saturn and its transit through Sag over the upcoming years. But I really wanted to give you this, this piece right now, first of all, for the people who might have been seeing it and then were nervous, so that you know that this can will be a very good thing. And also so that you can be most productive with it because any work you do now, you don't have to have it forced on you. That's part of why people have negative experiences with Saturn is that if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, the universe starts maybe was tapping and then starts banging and then starts just knocking stuff around. You want to prevent those reflections from having to happen the best you can by saying, okay, I hear you, I am doing something rather than having to have that wake up call or have that whatever. So, um, I hope that you have a wonderful May. Um, I hope that if you are drawn to have a personal chart reading, you will contact me if you resonate with my style of teaching. I can help bring you much more clarity and understanding about things in your chart, things in your chart that are holding you back from stepping into these highest expressions. Um, if you're at a crossroads, which most people are right now with the way the transits have been, I can assist you with navigating in that space so definitely contact me, Annie, at AnnieHelpsYou.com is my email. Click on the link below here or go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. And while you're there, check out the um, subliminal audios that I've created where you can listen to them and they can help build new neuronal pathways in your brain, which help you to create new experiences. Um, and have a nice one.